Oh, well, that's a beauty of the point in the cliff. This is a heliostat. That is, that it, it rotates automatically to pick up the sun wherever it is mm. and reflect it at 90 degrees through this window onto the heat absorbing wall. The mechanism for this is uh, in the wall there, electronic clock, and it rotates this heliostat 1.875 degrees every quarter of an hour. Now that keeps it in sync with the sun, which set, rises in that direction and sets in that direction. So the heliostat at the moment, as you see it here, is uh, roughly about 10 o'clock in the morning. And it will gradually go around there until about uh, five o'clock and uh, then it, the s switch will flick in the time clock and it will come right back again to starting point ready for another hot day tomorrow okay but uh, the reflected rays from here feel hotter than the direct sun itself uh, and uh, so it's really a remarkable piece of equipment. Just over two kilowatts of uh, panel up there. Here we have two banks of fixed photovoltaic panels and uh, all up including the rotating one I have almost three kilowatts of power so you multiply that by the um, uh, number of hours of sunshine they get during the day and I get something like uh, 14 kilowatt hours a day in summer and I get something like about eight uh, in winter time which more than meets our requirements so all up uh, I am, uh, they produce 110% of our consumption. Mm. So the extra 10% goes into the grid. Uh, but nevertheless, I get paid for every watt that I produce, every watt hour I produce. And uh, the uh, uh, supply authority supply me with free power, and they also owe me. $950 for this year's production alone, which is only six months of this year. So I've still got more to come. So it's really quite a financial uh, bargain. This uh, long ridge vent that you see here is a ventilating system for summer use only. It enables any warm air that's collected in the house on a hot summer's day to escape when we open everything up about six o'clock at night. And the, uh, the um, vines that you see on the north side of the house enable the collection of a lot of cool air in summer, aided by transpiration from the leaves. And that cool air, when we open up the house at six, uh, comes into the house and because of its density, it enables the warm air to escape out through here through the vents in the ceiling and that cools the house down fairly rapidly um, and uh, we leave the vents over, open overnight so it enables the house to ventilate and cool itself at night ready for another hot day tomorrow so we start another hot day with uh, a cool house it's rather like living in an ice box in a way and that lasts for about three quarters of the of another hot day. Very it's good. a very efficient system. Very right here, you can see the heat pump system 
for producing our hot water and this works remarkably well. Uh, the reason for having this system, even though it uses electricity, is because I was getting, at the time, I was getting a lot of shading from trees on the northern side in this particular spot. So we opted for the heat pump system which can work without direct sunlight. It takes its heat from the air surrounding it. It takes it by a, a reverse refrigerative process, absorbing the heat in, uh, in um, a refrigerative liquid, transferring that heat through a pipe to a compressor down in the garage down below. Uh, and that produces the extra heat which puts it directly into the water in the tank and there we have our hot water. It's only on for a couple of hours a day in actual fact. So it's, uh, it's very economical in the, the amount of electricity it uses and it's proved very effective. It doesn't even have to be coloured black. Right, well this is my prototype uh, grey water system taking the water from the shower and the basin in our ensuite. Not a high volume of water, uh, but the outlet pipe is fairly deep, so I had to get a very deep sump to collect the water and enable it to go through a pipe that goes underground and that soaks away into the, into the verge that we have here. So it's in effect watering the, the subsoil down there. So, we just remove that, you can see, you can see the pipe that goes out into, there's a, there's a mesh uh, entry to the pipe, uh, every now and again I take it off and clean it, but obviously it's uh, not all that clean at the moment. So there's the inlet pipe in that wall there, there's the outlet pipe at the bottom, and this is the overflow pipe which goes back now this we're now at a, an east facing window uh, which gets very low angle sun all the year round and the, you see it's a fairly large sunshade over the window and that keeps most of the hot sun that is later than about half past eight, nine o'clock. Uh, from there onwards, it uh, keeps the hot sun off the window and it serves a very good purpose um, for, for t two reasons. A, it's 95% um, uh, uh, shielding or shading from the hot infrared rays of the sunlight, but secondly, because of its knitted weave rather than its woven weave it refracts the daylight you can see part of that shade is in sunlight still you see this front part that's in sunlight and that's now while well, we're here too you see the vine on the wall this vine is a deciduous vine and in um, in summer that, that wall is a mass of uh, leaf which protects this wall from the hot rays of the early morning sun and prevents that room from heating up, these two rooms from heating up. And so, but in winter you see, uh, this is what you would see normally. The leaves have all dropped so the sun is able to warm this wall and reduce the heat loss from inside so it serves a purpose winter and summer and that's a very nice symbiotic relationship of a vine to comfort inside the house works very effectively but here is the um, um, main part of our water tank system uh, there's about five and a half thousand liters in this particular tank it's partly uh, submerged in the soil and come around here you can 
see where the water comes in from the gutter up there and this pipe here, this vertical pipe is an overflow if the tank ever gets to the full capacity. It does occasionally if we have a downpour <laughs> but at the moment the tanks are quite empty because we're right in the middle of a big drought. Uh, uh, but we have an automatic valve system on the inlet. We're still connected to the mains so that if our tanks do get empty as they are now we can then, uh, the valve switches over automatically and we're connected to the mains again. So that's been uh, quite a blessing I can tell you. Um, and the, there's an electric submersible pump inside there. You can see the connection box just over the top of the tank. Uh, and that uh, kicks in the moment we open the hot taps uh, in the house. It's a very efficient system. It doesn't require any attention other than uh, uh, cleaning of the filter bag, uh, which is just inside the top of the tank. And it's only a 10 minute job to clean that mm. twice a year. Beautiful. No good. Right, while we're here, now if you look at it this way too, most people uh, obtain a mortgage to build a house or to buy a house. If we add on, say, 2% extra, 3% extra, that amount would never be noticed in a mortgage. You'd be paying it off over X number of years. And the amount of savings that you're going to make in the house, and uh, we calculate that the sa savings in a fully fun functioning house could be of the order of $4,000 a year. Now, if you're going to save that amount of money every year of the running cost, that's going to mount up. And that will more than pay your mortgage. So it doesn't really matter if you have a higher mortgage in the beginning. You can easily pay it off. And we, we calculate that the amount of mortgage, extra mortgage, that you're going to put onto the house to make the house function, it is it will be paid off in about two and a half to three years. Well, it is terribly important that our grandchildren have an opportunity to enjoy life as we've enjoyed it so far. And one of the most important ways is by designing houses that are friendly to the environment and are a joy to live in. And this can be achieved even without air conditioning. Hmm. If you're interested in uh, saving money, then this is the house for you. Would you like to live in a house which is 90% cheaper to live in? You can save $4,000 a year by living in one of these houses compared to the sort of house that you're probably living in now. There you are, here's that for That's very good. A candid camera shot. Beautiful.